how much is this field worth in Afghani money? Like a uh, hundred thousand Afghani. And a hundred thousand Afghani. Two thousand dollars. Poppy the blooming. It's difficult to understate the pervasive influence of the drug trade in Afghanistan. Opium is everywhere. In recently liberated Helmand province, source of ninety percent of the world supply. It's difficult to find an irrigated piece of land not planted with opium. It's like weed in Kansas or corn in Nebraska, a billion dollar business that is larger than the sum total of all foreign aid. Under prodding from the U.S., the Afghan government is making a token effort to encourage crop substitution. The provincial governor explains. We have a very good plan that we have for the local people, just for the Marja people. We were going to give them money, we are going to give them seeds, we are going to give them plantasers so they have to educate their own upper coffee fields. The Marine commander is realistic about the program's prospects. Isn't it a tough sell to get rid of poppies when it's the big money maker? It is an extremely tough sell, particularly here in Marja, because there's been no government in Marja for many years. So this has been uh, how the people live, and this is how they, they make their money and feed their families. So trying to tell them to plow their poppy fields and, and plant wheat is, uh, is a tall order for the governor. In an effort to win over the locals, our forces have essentially been ordered to ignore the opium crop, creating a moral conundrum that is not nearly receiving the attention it deserves. It is flat out weird. One Marine told me how aggravating it is to watch a harvest like this, understanding fully what this crop is and what it will become. I think that the higher-ups and the people in the Obama administration and others in the United Nations and governments of Europe really have an explanation that they owe the people of the world. They're allowing this harvest to take place because they want to keep the peace here, but what havoc they are wreaking in the cities and towns of Western Europe and the United States is incalculable. It really is an awful dilemma that we put our Marines and soldiers in, and it's something that is extremely distasteful. Distasteful, dangerous. There are an estimated half a million heroin addicts in America, and they're no longer the ghetto stereotype from the 1960s. Before we meet an addict from the suburbs, uh, Dr. Denise, Dr. Denny Carice, the clinical <laughs> yeah. director of Phoenix House, the legendary drug treatment center, uh, joins me here in New York. You know, the price is going to go plunging down because the dope is going to flood into this country and flood into Western Europe. Uh, isn't it already cheap, heroin? It's already incredibly cheap. In our, in our treatment programs in Texas, kids are getting it for $2.50 a bump is what it's called, and that's black tar heroin. Uh, New York, New, New England area, it's about $5 a bag. So these are kids that can literally spend their lunch money for a hit. But how are these suburban kids getting hooked? Why heroin? That's actually the most important thing about this epidemic, what I see as an epidemic. Kids are starting by using Oxycontin or any other prescription opioid. These are not, you don't wake up one day in the marching band and on the, you know, on the honor roll and say, I think I'll try shooting dope, you know. You get to a party, your friends, your parents' cabinet, medicine cabinet, you get an Oxycontin, you get a Vicodin, and you start taking it. You take it a little longer, and then you start doctor shopping getting prescriptions, you start getting it maybe from the internet, and suddenly Oxycontin at 40 to $75 a pill, the switch over to snorting heroin doesn't seem like such a big deal. And so know? for five bucks you get stoned much more you uh, get easily. So more easily, it's easier to get, and then it's not a quick jump from there, from snorting See, it to smoking I'm, I'm it telling to injecting it. This policy to leave this crop alone is a disaster. It is an absolute humiliation for the United States. It is pathetic. We have to reverse this. Stand by, uh, Dr. Uh, Carice. Uh, when we come back, the new face of heroin addiction, uh, kids in the suburbs, five bucks, their lunch money on dope after this. Continuing our special at-large probe of this misguided U.S. policy to leave the poppy opium production alone in Afghanistan. <laughs> Meet 19-year-old Kevin B. Uh, he's addicted to heroin. He was, uh, is, I guess. I don't know how you <laughs> characterize it. His mother, Kelly uh, Bartholomew, uh, also uh, joins us. So thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate H it. How old were you when you got started? Uh, well, uh, almost 16. You know. Had it, had it happen? Had it happen? Um, 
you know, I was hanging around with friends, usually, you know, and you started out smoking pot and drinking, and, you know, eventually uh, they started using heroin and other drugs, cocaine, and... So did you snort it first? Yeah, I started snorting it first. And then what? And, and then I, after a couple months, maybe I started uh, injecting it. You know. And ha where did you get the money to do? Where it? did I get the money? Anywhere I could. Really. Did you steal from uh, your I mom? stole. I stole. I, I robbed. I, I swindled. You know, any, any way I could possibly get the money to, uh, you know, get the next hit. And mom, did you ever think that something like ghetto drug like this was going to fit you? You're had no on Long Island, right? We're we not far no from where idea. I went. Until he until he got arrested with it, we had no idea what he was doing. And then your reaction when it happened? It, it totally devastated. It ruined our whole family. It was very hard getting him treatment. It's, they have, we have no rights. There's no place to go for help. There's very little. There's, if they finally decide they want to go for help, you can't find a bed for them or a place. And then they're in and out of treatment. And if they don't want to go, they don't want to keep them there. So you don't have and, a lot and of And what about your insurance? Insurance is uh, 28 days and for life. And then after that, you're done. And 28 days. That's it. And heroin addiction is forever. Yes. What do you think, Kevin? They say the, the old saying is once a junkie, always a junkie. Do you believe that? Um, to an extent, yeah. I believe that, you know, once an addict, you're always going to be an addict. You're always going to be in that addict state of mind. You know, like, it's never going to leave you. You know, it's always going to be with you being an addict, you know, going to active recovery. Yeah, I feel like it's just I'm always going to be an addict, but I'm not going to, like, to an extent. You know, I'm always going to be in a situation where, you know, I could relapse or something like that. But, you know, I don't believe that, you know, once a junkie, always going to be a junkie. But I'm always going to be a recovering addict. You hopeful, Mom? I'm very hopeful. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's all I, I think about is his recovery. And that yeah, he stays that there. Is well. it, it's devastating. It just rips the family apart. And this policy to let this dope be grown? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I, I don't know. I thought they were going to torture it all and get rid of it. That's what I was hoping for. But it's coming over, and it's getting worse and worse. And, and Dr. Carice of uh, Phoenix House, of Chief Clinical Officer, schools are the place where most kids get hooked? Our kids uh, across the country, New England, New York, Texas, they say that they get their drugs, they get heroin from their siblings, their friends, and they buy it in school. So this is not a corner that kids are going to, at least not until they get really hooked maybe, um, to get the drugs from somebody they don't know. They get it from their friends, they get it from their friends in school. Well, listen, I wish you the best. I hope that this appearance maybe starts something great for you. I really, I wish you the best. Thank you. you know, He's doing great. It's worth it to save someone else's life, you know. Amen, amen to that. And Kelly, thank you for having the courage thank to come on. I know us. it couldn't have, been, couldn't have been easy. And Dr. Carice, you know, Phoenix House, we love you, and, you know, yeah. you're dealing with a whole new set of problems here. We are. We are. Okay. And you folks at home, uh, remember, if you're looking for a new movement, $250 a year, People keep their stashes. So Kevin, you support me on the back man? You got this little facial hair going on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time. Bye bye.